Hey dogs, this is Isaac here, and welcome back to Isaac Reviews 2021. So, I watched Clifford the Big Red Dog recently, and before it came out, my expectations weren't exactly the highest. I mean, judging by how weak the trailers looked, I'd assume that it'd be like two of the other live-action animated hybrid films that may not have been the worst things ever, but still didn't hold too much merit. But now that I've seen it on Paramount+, Plus, I can safely say that it's... a movie. It exists. Yeah. I suppose I should start with what I didn't like about this, since, well, this movie isn't immune to being flawed. First off, the writing is a mess, with several story choices being really weird and the plot itself being very tired and cliched. The humor, while some of the line delivery was kinda funny, could get very annoying and juvenile at times, as well as the characters being pretty one-note and forgettable even if some of the actors could give solid performances. I say some because others, especially the child actors, clearly gave less effort than others. Also, the editing in this is complete garbage, transitioning at the speed of a cheetah on Red Bull, and just looking very amateurish overall. But aside from those problems, I wouldn't call Clifford a bad film unlike what most of the reviews are saying. If anything, I did find some genuinely strong aspects in this aside from the weak script and horrible editing. For one, the movie does have an interesting commentary on the dangers of animal testing, highlighted with a biotech company in the film called LifeGrow. Now yes, it does kind of make this look like another one of those kids films we keep getting where it has to have some sort of ham-fisted message about saving the environment, but I was still interested in the execution overall, and yeah, it was pretty solid. But overall, the biggest positive I see in Clifford is the heart, especially the relationship between Emily Elizabeth and the titular Big Red Dog. Now yes, this movie doesn't bother to explain how he snuck into her backpack, and yes, some scenes involving them could grind the pacing to a screeching halt, but the bond that they establish throughout the course of the film does feel nice and can even lead to some rather heartwarming moments. I mean, yeah, these moments can be brought down a bit by Darby Camp's weak performance, but I still found plenty of parts in the feature that made me go, aww, now that's wholesome. Anyways, to sum things up here, while my expectations with Clifford the Big Red Dog weren't very high to begin with, I will admit that there were still plenty of enjoyable aspects. Now yes, the writing was clunky, some of the humor was pretty juvenile, and the editing was awful, but the acting was generally okay, some of the dialogue could be kinda witty, the commentary was a bit forced but still worthwhile, and the heart was definitely in the right place. Now, with my recommendation, if you have any siblings or cousins younger than 8, they'll probably enjoy this, but for any older audiences, it's harmless, so maybe you might get some merit out of it, but don't go into it expecting some sort of Tarantino masterpiece. 6 out of 10, it wasn't that good, but it could have been worse. Next time on Isaac Reviews 2021, we're going to be taking a look at Ghostbusters Afterlife. Honestly, I'm holding out hope that this could be enjoyable, but either way, I know it'll be leaps and bounds better than the 2016 garbage. But anyways, that's going to be it for this episode of Isaac Reviews 2021. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!